Sentiamo, sa. Cominciamo? <ride> Buongiorno, prima un saluto in lingua madre. <ride> Quindi benvenuti in questa sede. Siamo qui <coughs> per dare avvio a... Eh, stanno scorrendo delle cose qui. Siamo qui per dare avvio a questa conferenza finale e abbiamo una mattinata molto densa, quindi non perderemo altro tempo. Lo dico in italiano, poi in qualche modo lo ripeterò in inglese. C'è l'assessore Venturini che ci ha mandato un messaggio del Comune di Venezia che attendevamo, ma è impegnato in attività istituzionali e spera di poterci raggiungere. So, good morning everybody. I would like to welcome you to this final conference. Uh, I'm very pleased to see you here, not online, but <laughs> in presence. So, uh, the, 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 the work in this, in this morning is quite long. And uh, <coughs> I want to uh, immediately, without consuming any time, to call upon Ms. <coughs> Silvia Comiati, that is the head of the IT and HR Joint Secretariat. And we, we would like to attempt some perspective on the future of these kind of programs. So please, I give you the floor. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, inviting me here. I'm very happy to be in this uh, final conference of this important standard project. Um, I also bring um, a hello from my colleagues, who, uh, especially the project manager of this project, who couldn't be here uh, today. So I will uh, basically focus my presentation on the next programming period, providing you some information about what our program is uh, uh, envisaging for uh, specifically for tourism and culture um, for 21-27. Um, before, uh, I just a couple of words about our current program for those of you who are not uh, fully familiar with it. Um, Italy Croatia is the program which uh, um, was uh, uh, firstly launched in this uh, programming period of 1420, it's the maritime program. Uh, we basically fund uh, cooperation between uh, Italy and Croatia, uh, the two countries which uh, are sharing a maritime borders. Um, we focus in particular on brew growth. Uh, we like to, to see and to um, project our program as a blue program because we uh, have a specific uh, attention uh, uh, to um, marine and maritime activities. Um, our program area um, has uh, um, an, a population of 12.5 million citizens and uh, so far we approved 83 projects in standard, standard plus and strategic call. Recently, we also um, uh, have uh, uh, assessed and approved nine uh, new projects, which are cluster projects, dealing with uh, the um, knowledge sharing and uh, uh, transferring of knowledge and uh, uh, outputs from uh, uh, standard and standard plus projects. So this is the time lab of uh, our program. Um, we started in 2015 with the approval of the program. And uh, so far, we launched and uh, uh, managed three call for proposals, standard, standard plus, and strategic. And recently, last year, we also launched, as I said, a last uh, call for cluster. In uh, 2021 and 2022, we, we are also very busy with uh, the programming phase, so the launch of the new program. Um, we are now in the negotiation with the commission to uh, finalize our program, and we hope uh, that uh, Soon uh, we will get an approval. So talking about uh, thematic, um, I have uh, here highlighted uh, uh, the priority axis three, which is the priority dealing with uh, uh, environmental and uh, cultural heritage, where uh, SLIDES project uh, is funded. 
Uh, we also have three other priorities dealing with innovation, safety and resilience, and uh, maritime transport. And uh, um, as you can see, we, also, we uh, funded projects uh, in uh, seven different uh, specific objectives. So we'll now jump to the 21-27 programming period. And uh, as I said before, uh, also the new program will have uh, a specific attention to blue and blue economy, blue growth, uh, and uh, marine and maritime activities. Our aim is also to capitalize uh, about the cooperation that we experienced in this uh, uh, programming period 1420 uh, through dedicated capitalization activity, but also uh, thanks to uh, a sort of a continuation in, uh, in the thematics that you will see later on. Um, we also aim to um, enhance and reinforce synergies with EUSER. As you know, EUSER is uh, our framework in terms of strate strategic uh, um, concept and strategic um, uh, macro-regional uh, uh, area, and uh, we need uh, and we want to uh, pursue a stronger commitment and a stronger alignment to it. Uh, the new program will be, is actually shaped around five main pillars, basically. Um, the first one uh, is dealing with uh, sustainable economic development, and in particular about innovation, green and blue innovation. Uh, this is uh, basically in, in, uh, in uh, align with uh, the current PI1, uh, so focusing on uh, research, innovation, but also on skills, appraising of skills in different domains. Uh, the second pillar is about natural assets. This is uh, connected to PO2, which is uh, the policy objective dedicated to the green uh, uh, transition. We will be working on climate uh, adaptation and also on biodiversity and pollution, in particular uh, pollution of the sea. The third topic uh, uh, is the cultural heritage and sustainable tourism, and we will uh, talk uh, about it in detail uh, in the next slides. And uh, finally, um, cross-border mobility solutions. This is uh, again aligned with the maritime transport that we funded in, the, in this programming period. And finally, an, a novelty for 21-27 uh, is the uh, enhancement of institutional capacity and uh, the reduction of uh, cross-border obstacles. This is a, a brand new uh, topic for our program and is connected to ISO 1, the specific objective uh, of Interreg. So what we did in 2021, we held uh, 11 uh, task force meetings. Uh, the task force is uh, basically the body uh, dedicated to the programming phase. And uh, uh, thanks to this work, we were able to prepare the program, which was approved by the task force in December 2021, and then submitted to the commission in March this year. We held uh, two local consultations in April and one consultation uh, at cross-border level in October. And uh, stakeholder consultations were actually the, uh, one of the things and one of the tools that we used to actually uh, decide what uh, strategy we would uh, uh, embrace for the new program. Um, we finalized the territorial and social economic analysis. This is a very important document that you can find also in our uh, program uh, website. And it's basically the uh, starting inputs for the programming period because it gives uh, a picture of what is the situation of the uh, cross-border area and uh, uh, provides, as I said, inputs to the uh, programming bodies. Um, regarding the uh, next uh, steps, as I said, in March, we submitted the program to the commission. We are now um, uh, concluding the first round of observations. As you know, uh, the commission makes observation to the program and we need to either um, confirm or uh, integrate the program or uh, motivate if we want to um, continue as we, as we decided in the first place. Uh, we envisage the program approval by the end of the summer this year and we are planning to launch the new program in autumn 2022. Uh, some data about the program. Uh, we have a, a total budget ERDF uh, of 172.9 million euro, uh, to which you need to adapt the national co-financing, which for the next programming period will be 20%. Uh, 
and uh, the program area is uh, the same as in the current uh, program. So this is the strategy. I've already anticipated to you the topics, uh, just for you to know that uh, there are some novelties in the continuation between the two programs. Um, the first novelty is related to specific objective 1.4, which is dedicated to skills for smart specialization, industrial transition, and entrepreneurship. Um, a, a thing I want to say about PO1, for its objective one dedicated to innovation, is that there will be a strong uh, um, emphasis on uh, enterprises. This was uh, 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 resulting from the cross-border consultations, but also from the territorial analysis. The need to um, reinforce cooperation between enterprises in Croatia and uh, in Italy. Uh, the other uh, novelty of this uh, strategy is uh, the last uh, um, priority, priority five, integrated governance for stronger cooperation. As I said, this is connected to ISO 1, Interreg specific objective one, dedicated to uh, better cooperation governance. We will be working on uh, institutional capacities between uh, public bodies and stakeholders um, and also on the reduction and uh, possibly solving of uh, cross-border obstacles. Uh, let me also mention there are two um, cross-cutting issues which will be highly uh, considered uh, in the proposals that we will receive uh, for the next period. One is digitalization. You will see also in uh, PO4 and uh, 4.6 dedicated to culture and tourism uh, um, for the next programming period, digitalization is a, a very important topic and it will be uh, very much uh, um, supported by the program. The second cross-cutting issue is circular economy. And uh, again, this, is, uh, this was uh, a requ requested and um, proposed by the um, uh, task force, but also uh, very much uh, sustained by the Commission. So the importance to integrate circular economy in all uh, policy objectives is uh, a fundamental uh, aspect for the next program. Okay, uh, so we are entering into uh, what is more interesting for you um, as, a, as a topic, which is uh, uh, specific objective 4.6, and uh, which is uh, translated into priority four for, the, for our program, uh, dedicated to culture and tourism for sustainable development. So the first thing, uh, it's not uh, uh, new uh, for a lot of you, but uh, it should be stressed. Uh, as you can see, there is a big difference between the current programming period where culture and tourism were integrated into uh, green policies. For the next programming period, culture and tourism will be part of the um, PO4, which is dedicated to uh, social and inclusive Europe, and in particular to the uh, support to the pillar of social rights. This, is, uh, as this has been quite a, a striking news also for us who received the, when we received the, the, the draft uh, regulations because it's a, it's a big shift in terms of uh, uh, priorities and in terms of how you see uh, culture and tourism um, regarding the overall strategy of, of each program. Um, so, uh, talking about how we plan to implement uh, and uh, what we, we are thinking about uh, for fundings in, uh, in Priority 4, uh, we, will be, uh, we are uh, thinking about uh, funding uh, standard projects as we did uh, in the current period. We have a novelty which is uh, represented by small projects, which are basically uh, small cooperation initiatives uh, up to 200,000 euro for a small organization. Uh, uh, very uh, focused activities like uh, events, exchanges, and this kind of uh, uh, trainings. Uh, uh, very, very, as I said, focused uh, um, actions. And, uh, and here we would like to see also the involvement of the third sector and uh, new beneficiaries. Uh, we will also be funding uh, Operation of Strategic Importance. So this is the new name, as you, see, you can see in the slide, we call it OZI. Uh, it's a new name for strategic projects, basically, and it's the way the new uh, regulation envisage uh, um, as, a, as a funding instrument for strategic operations. 
uh, our program decided to link the strategic operations to EUSER flagships. Uh, some of you might be more familiar with flagships, some others might want to have a look. But uh, in our program, you, find all we, you can find all the details about the different flagships of Pillar 4 that we are supporting. Um, the budget for Priority 4 will be 31 million euro. And uh, there's a lot of uh, different groups and target groups that we have envisaged for this uh, um, priority. I would like just to uh, raise uh, attention on uh, the vocational training organizations, which are quite important for us, the DMOs and tourist boards but also youth. Uh, I will also spend a few words about youth because uh, this is quite uh, uh, an important topic uh, for the new program. So I will not go into detail about the different uh, um, actions, indicative actions that we have envisaged in the program. Just uh, uh, make sure that you have a look when you decide to um, prepare a proposal. We have uh, basically three main results expected for this priority. One is the diversification, the localization of tourist flows, which is very much in line with the, the topic of slides. Uh, the second one is new and innovative integrated offers of coastal tourism dedicated, uh, as I said, to the um, maritime cooperation. And the third one is the improvement and modernization of policies uh, for uh, valorizing uh, cultural heritage. Um, what I wanted to uh, focus today, because I think it's a, it's a good input for you um, to start thinking about the new projects, is uh, um, some references that we have included in the program and which are quite relevant for uh, this uh, um, specific objective. The first one is the alignment and the support uh, of the program to the new Bauhaus initiative. Uh, um, this is uh, a cross-cutting uh, initiative which the Commission is uh, very much uh, supporting and also Interreg has been requested to actually um, contribute uh, to this initiative. You can find a lot of details online that are also dedicated call for proposal, but basically the idea is uh, to translate the Green Deal, so the Green Transition, into um, experiences related uh, to the concept of sustainability, aesthetic and inclusion. So uh, these are the basic uh, keywords, and I would uh, just uh, invite you to have a look at it uh, and to integrate these uh, uh, keywords in your proposals. The second topic, as I said, is uh, young generations. Uh, today, is, sorry, this year is the year dedicated to youth. A lot of uh, activities, a lot of events are going on at European level um, with and on youth. And uh, also our program is uh, promoting uh, such activities and we have integrated youth and the need to actually um, involve young generations in the programming and in the implementation of the programs. And we think that also PO4 could uh, contribute uh, to this uh, important topic. Finally, um, an important reference comes from the, a recent report of the Commission, which is called uh, Transition Pathway for Tourism. Maybe some of you already had a look at it. Uh, we, had, uh, um, we have uh, actually integrated our program with uh, some of the um, inputs that come from this, uh, this uh, report, which uh, identifies measures uh, for green and digital transition uh, in uh, the topic of tourism. Uh, and has the aim of uh, finding uh, uh, ways to enhance the resilience of uh, European tourism. Um, regarding this report, there are some topics that we are now integrating in the program that you will actually find in the new version of the program when it will be approved. So if you look at the program now, you will not find these topics, but I'm, I'm happy to anticipate to you that this will be <clears throat> topic uh, that we are integrating. So the first topic is the fairness and the quality in tourism jobs. This is uh, a topic that the Commission is very much supporting because uh, uh, studies have shown that there is um, a lack of uh, um, uh, stable uh, workforce in tourism sector. There is uh, um, a problem with the equality in employment, uh, of accessibility to employment in the tourism sector, of having stable and, uh, and uh, equal jobs. And, um, and also the difficulty to retain the, the skilled uh, workforce. 
So this is a very important topic that we will uh, be able to uh, present and to, to be funded in the program if you, if you are interested in. Uh, the second topic is accessibility, not only for disabled uh, people, so not only with, in terms of um, infrastructure and, uh, uh, for instance, uh, digitalization of uh, cultural heritage, uh, giving uh, opportunities for all uh, to, to access uh, um, these uh, this, um, resources, but also uh, the idea of uh, uh, um, building uh, traveling opportunities for all kinds of people. So this means also unemployed people, people with, the, with the low income or retired people, old people. So the idea of uh, accessibility for all. And there are different uh, uh, categories of uh, population, and uh, the tourist offers should bring uh, uh, attention to all of them. Uh, finally, the last two topics. One is the well-being of residents. We heard, uh, we've talked a lot about this topic also in the current program in Peter, but this time uh, the idea is really to make a, a stronger effort on the involvement of resident populations in the tourist uh, um, destinations, uh, including them both in the planning and in the implementation uh, phase uh, of uh, tourism activities. Uh, finally, as I come back again, if I haven't uh, stressed this enough, uh, we will be attention in the sustainable tourism for the younger generation here with an attention to the type of consumers the, that young people are, but also the type of, uh, uh, let's say, <coughs> providers of tourist services. <coughs> so the idea that uh, young people should be involved and should share the values and um, of the digital and green transition also in tourism and be able to transfer these values to, to their generation. Um, okay, so this is it uh, from my side. I hope uh, um, that uh, these inputs will be useful for you and um, I wish you a good uh, conference and I'm happy to hear the rest. Thank you. So thank you very much for this interesting perspectives. I, there are some priorities that uh, you will see uh, are parts of our uh, results for, for our project. So we are a bit in late, bit late, so we, we, I try to keep the, the time uh, uh, in control. So um, I want only to, to sketch some highlights of our project, and then my colleagues oh, in, in this project will explain better some pieces of this complex project. So, come si va avanti con questa cosa? Okay. So this is one, <laughs> it's only a sketch, it's one of the many ways you can represent the complexity when you talk about sustainability, sustainability in local development. So only to say that when we projected the, the, uh, our, our work, we choose to concentrate only in, in, in some uh, intertwined challenges that we consider strategically crucial. The, the, the first was the lack of specific and dynamic knowledge on visitor flow, local economic and social activities. A, a, a knowledge system that can let the decision making better than in the past. There is also a great need for a better distribution, as we have seen, of, in, of uh, uh, visitors flowing time and space in, in our destination. And the third, third of these uh, challenges was the risk of that local identity disappeared. The, the problem of to exploit the value of local identity and tangible intangible heritage. So, uh, uh, slide adopted a, a specific approach and, a, 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 and some tools. The approach was to try to uh, cope with a, a problem that combines multiple aspect, civil, social, cultural, economics, and the, 
The second aspect, very important then, is that when you, when you try to work in this destination, you have to cope to co with the multiplicities of actors, not homogeneous. The, all these actors work in condition of interdependence, but they are able to, to act in, in autonomy. So we, we, we choose uh, to, the, the, the project was inspired by a participatory approach in which public administration stakeholder has to be involved uh, and contribute to the definition of the problem, to the definition of the strategy, to the, to the definition of the tool itself. So in, in a way there is a sort of uh, research in action, this, in which the protagonists of the changes are involved in the process of defining the problem itself. Uh, as I just said, the knowledge system try to put and integrate many aspects. As you see, the mutual relationship between the development of tourism and other urban factions, because sometimes it's underestimated that it's impossible to talk about tourism, sustainability, without speaking more general in, in local development, the sustainability of local development in the territory, because the problem is not com confined in, in the tourism itself. And uh, as I just said, another, um, another topic was have a, a more powerful integrated system for no better targets profile of, of, of visitors and mapping the operators, the workers, the, the, the competencies that you can exploit in each destination. So the t about the tools, my colleague will, will, will explain better in in, 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 in in next presentation, but uh, the, the main core of, of the core of our work was to build a, a smart destination ecosystem formed by four components, the data hub, the destination mobility models, a way to map uh, tangible and intangible cultural heritage in a way that can show his, uh, its uh, tourism potential, and finally, a, a visualization instrument to help decision maker to do that job, the destination dashboard. So some some sketches about the that can give can can give sense of, of, of our work. Uh, the, the the approach, the tools, the pilot action that were built during the project must be thought as ex experimental mm -hmm. proto prototypes, cap capable of tracing a path. We want to give some. Uh, uh, direction of possible uh, efforts. Uh, a, a great challenge is to motivate and push administrators and stakeholders to continue to invest and cooperate along this line because otherwise the, 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 all, all the works, all, all, the, all the results disappear. Uh, another thing is that uh, we, we, we thought in terms of that, that should be adaptable, adapt, adaptable to different specific contexts. There is no recipes, but only ingredients that you can combine to fit with different uh, situations, evaluation stages that uh, destination can have. So another, another, another point is that in this project, we try to combine the potential of technologies with the analogical part of our life, of our, all the reality of our territory, the physicality of places, the, the way the people use and, and live the cities, people with their competencies and the problem of workforces, and and the heritage of knowledge and traditions. So uh, at the end, we collect a sort of 
framework, a collection of drivers and priorities, some evidence that uh, come from, from, from the work we, we have done. And so, uh, very briefly, I want to sketch some of these drivers, but I think that's one of the, of the most important legacy of this project will be all the documents, schemes, and, and tools we leave in the, in the deliverables of the project, because we want to, to, we want to, to, to put at disposal a repository of all this experience we, we did. So only very briefly, what emerges? is a, as, as pillars are this more or less this topic. There is a great need of more coordination and synergy among stakeholders. The, 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 the necessities to, to network. This is one of the best, one of the main uh, uh, needs mm -hmm. that emerge. Another, another uh, topic uh, very important is the way that we we, we, we can expand the content of a visitor experience and the content of what we can offer to exploit the potential of the, the territory. And so one of the, of the main points was the need to differentiate in the contents and forms and, and location of what we offer. And there is many ways to do it. And in particular, with try to use digital technologies to empower this differentiation. Another is the need to target more precisely using information. This is one of the other very important uh, topic. How can I use the digital technologies to better known visitors, people, city users, Otherwise, I, I'm not able to, I will not able to uh, improve life in the cities, tourism experience, and so on. Uh, and the big, big challenge, the need to improve data collection and accessibility, as my, explain will, as my colleague will explain better after, uh, was very difficult to to collect data and uh, to, to elaborate these data that are not homogeneous, not continuous, very dispersed among many actors at, at different territorial levels. Uh, and connected to this, this topic is how to support uh, stakeholder engagement in, in the data challenge, in particular small business, small organization. Uh, this, is, this aspect was considered essential for a broad involvement because there is a sort of paradox. The small organization have understood the data can help them a lot, but they, sometimes they perceive this as an unbearable cost for them. So how to help these, these people to engage the, 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 the data games. And also the problem that sometimes visitors, we want to know the visitor, we want to track visitors, but sometimes they, they don't, are not so inclined to leave data. And so the problem that emerged was security, privacy, clear rules to, exchange, to collect and exchange data. And final, was a, 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 a great deal with the training and education. This is one of the key all the destination have indicated as important. So to, in this program, not only invest in digital infrastructure, but invest in people, in human resources. Otherwise, they, they can't participate to the digital, digital transformation. So more or less, these are the, the main uh, some highlights of, of the project. And time is Fujit, <laughs> si dice in Latino. 
So I, I won't give the floor to my colleagues to better explain some pieces of this complex project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Tamo, for this nice presentation. So I'm very happy that we gather here today to discuss about project that we work on for the past uh, three years. So um, my name is uh, Martina Ambrusets. I'm from the Institute for Tourism, and here is my colleague Valeria Minghetti from CISAT. So we will just going to briefly um, introduce you with the slides, uh, main approach and tools. Uh, for the beginning, just a few basic information about project. So, um, the start date was in um, 2019, and it's supposed to end in uh, June uh, 2021. But because of the health crisis, it was extended for a year, so it will end in June 2022. The budget, uh, foreseen budget, was 2.5 million euros, and the partnership consists of 11 partners. So the lead partner is Kaposkari, then we have Cisat, Ecipa, Cipro Ferrara, Municipality of Bari, Municipality of Venice, CAST, Institute for Tourism, CAF College Rijeka, Dura, Dubrovnik, and Šibenik Tourist Board. So I would just like to emphasize that we have five cities involved, so Venice, Ferrara, Bari, Dubrovnik, and Šibenik. Uh, so what are the slides project main aims? So we would like to develop a common cross-border methodology and strategy in order to analyze and assess the sustainable competitiveness of the five cities I've mentioned uh, before. Those are Adriatic cultural cities who are also popular tourism destinations. But our results will be uh, transferable to all other uh, cities as well. Uh, the second thing that we would like to achieve is to monitor and manage visitor tourist flows and tourism mobility patterns, especially in congested urban, urban areas in order to decrease human pressure to heritage sites. Uh, we will hear in more details in one of the presentations that are on our agenda about the uh, mobility models. So the third thing is uh, we want to preserve and valorize local ident identity and typical cultural heritage with a focus on living culture, making these activities a leverage for local economic diversification and sustainable development. So how are we supposed to achieve this? Well, as Professor Tama already mentioned, with a smart destination ecosystem. So for the past three years, we were building an integrated knowledge system supported by innovation technology, which should help cities to identify their tourism and urban profile and assessing their tourism and non-tourism performance from different urban perspectives. The second thing, uh, we would like to help cities to be aware of the visitor mobility patterns within the urban environment with a focus on pedestrian mobility and monitor it over time and space. The third thing, so the last but not least, uh, we would like to help, to help cities to map, craft activities and CCIs, define and depict their tourism potential in order to promote them as a driver of local sustainable development and job creation. So now I would like to give a word to uh, Valeria so they so she can explain us in more detail about the uh, slides knowledge system. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martina. Good morning, everybody. So let's go into detail of the smart destination uh, ecosystem. So the system is composed by uh, four main blocks. So the first one is the smart destination data hub. Our scope is to integrate in a unique repository a huge set of information about the city, so economic, social, tourist, cultural, accessibility and mobility, but also, for example, reputational data 
retrieved from uh, a private platform like uh, uh, TripAdvisor. The information comes from internal and external sources, but also from primary correlation, for example, uh, regarding mobility from the uh, live, uh, uh, live collection of uh, information about mobility around the city. So this is the first, uh, the, 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 the core of the system. Then we have two other blocks. So one is the mobility, uh, the mobility models that Armando Bazzani will show you later in more detail, uh, with a focus on pedestrian mobility, uh, which provide a picture of pedestrian mobility characterizing its partner, uh, each partner city and a set of dynamic mobility maps uh, that help visualizing the real-time evolution of the um, visitor flow around, uh, around the city. Then we have another block uh, that concerns the mapping of craft activities and cultural and creative industries. Uh, um, the, scope, the scope of this uh, activity was to collect a set of uh, uh, information on existing artisans and, uh, uh, and industries beyond the ATECO codes uh, using uh, primary and, and secondary, uh, secondary data. Uh, the second uh, objective was to develop a dynamic map of craft activities that can be overlapped to the map of uh, to the mobility maps. Uh, in order to understand if which uh, these activities are uh, along, for example, the main popular tourist route, uh, and also provide information to uh, also build a new alternative route to promote uh, this, uh, this uh, local activity which represents the identity uh, of the city. So these three blocks are strictly inter interconnected. Why? Because, for example, the mobility models uh, uh, are fitted by information already included by the, in uh, Smart Destination Data Hub, but the uh, live data collected uh, are uploaded in the Data Hub. At the same time, the, the mapping of craft activities uh, use some information included in the Data Hub and provide information that feed the, the Data Hub. The fourth component, which is transversal to the other three blocks, is the destination uh, dashboard that uh, Simona Aceto and Antonio Picerni will uh, describe to you later. And uh, um, it translates the output, uh, the output of the previous activity into a user-friendly format, uh, in a so knowledge useful for tourist manager and city managers in general. So the panel layout displays uh, a set of information regarding the city performance uh, on different aspects, uh, combining uh, a set of key performance indicators and also data, uh, data correlations. So, um, but why is it is so important to invest in data intelligence? Uh, you can see in the slide two, uh, two quotes uh, frequently, frequently used. Uh, we can say that uh, we need data to take informed decisions. So having data that produce information about the city, state of the art is important, especially in uncertain time, uh, like we had in the last uh, two years, for example. And also gaining knowledge can help uh, the planning, uh, the development of new product and promotional strategies, as well as to measure the impact of, uh, uh, of tourism or different action planned uh, regarding, regarding tourism. So, um, as mentioned at the beginning, also by Michele Tama, what was the great, great challenge of this project? Finding and collecting the right data. So, the data uh, we, we use to build the blocks uh, um, we have seen in the, slide, uh, in the slide before. So, to build the data hub, the mobility models, uh, and also the map of craftsmen. Um, what kind of data? Uh, uh, I mean, secondary data, so official statistics and data provided by different sources, uh, public and private sources, but also primary data, uh, for example, collected through the direct survey with craftsmen, but also with the specific uh, uh, IT tools, so the Wi-Fi sensor and the video cameras used to, um, to measure pedestrian mobility around the city. So uh, the main, uh, main issue uh, we, 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 we faced uh, was that very few data uh, are available or accessible at city level. This is a big problem. Uh, and this is connected with the problem of data silos. So this high data dispersal among public administration. We have different uh, departments 
that have different data in this uh, database do not uh, uh, talk each other. Uh, another important issue is the, um, the availability of open data that you can easily uh, upload uh, into the system. Uh, another issue is the limited data timing uh, and the length of time series and also the updating of information. Um, in, the, um, in this specific uh, project, which is an interreg project, the other problem was to compare data from different countries, we are, which uh, often have different uh, data collection systems. For example, in Croatia, uh, some information exists only at county level and not the city level. So this is or in other city, for example, in Venice, we have information regarding tourism, regarding the whole municipality, uh, the historical city center. So it's a bit difficult to, to combine a, a different situation. Another important issue when we talk and we think about in a big data perspective is to combine public and private data. So to deal with the private sources who make a business with data and so they try to, to gain uh, and to sell this information, not only to private operators such as uh, hotel operators, but also from cities. So this was another, another problem to, to deal with. So finally, uh, the dashboard, uh, what, is, uh, what is for? Um, from uh, the, um, the logic of this construction is a one-stop shop of data and information about the city related to different key areas of analysis. We have seen the different uh, uh, section, also the data hub, and, and we will see about in the dashboard. From the technical point of view is the web panel uh, that helps uh, city manager to view quickly the main city trends and performance in a user-friendly way with a focus on three main topics, tourism, urban uh, mobility, and cultural identity and, uh, and craft. Thank you very much for your attention. I leave the stage to Armando Bazzani. Yes, I try to maintain the time. <laughs> so thank you very much for this invitation. I try to be short in order not to be to, to delay. So I, yeah. <laughs> uh, I will talk about uh, what are uh, mobility model and what uh, we have done in this project. Uh, and especially, I want to stress uh, the, some original point that we, we consider. So this is my, uh, my collaborator uh, in, uh, in uh, and I am from the Department of Physics. So really I'm a physicist which is working on uh, uh, mobility problems. So we, we start from five points that we have seen, you have seen also in the previous slides. Data collection, data analysis, visitor mobility model, simulation results. So I will uh, talk about what is for us a mobility model and which kind of simulation and the result uh, I can provide with this model to you. And I stress that there are tools. It is not an answer to a real problem. It is a tool that can help you to, to get uh, uh, information from what we call uh, uh, big data. So uh, we have performed a data collection in all the five cities involving the model with two technologies. One is the Wi-Fi sniffer. So when you use your mobile phone, mobile phone usually connected to the network, and you can use the antenna of the Wi-Fi in order to localize the activity of a mobile phone. So for example, this is Dubrovnik, can we use the antenna spread in the Dubrovnik city in order to get information. The same we did in Ferrara, and we get information about the uh, mobility because we have also information on uh, a, a, an identifier of a, a mobile phone and this can be followed in the city. So we are not able to cover all the city but we have a spot information. The other technology that has been used is from video camera. If you install a video camera, uh, you can install an intelligent software that is just uh, uh, looking to people passing in, in the video and counting how many people passing and also following people. So inside slide, uh, we have uh, developed uh, a software which is able to analyze, this is Sibenik, 
video camera and uh, to, to, to get information which is the flow uh, in real time passing in, uh, under to this video camera. This is an example of Venice. We have used, I don't know if it's working, but I hope so. This is uh, uh, an example in San Marco Square. We have a free camera that we have adopted. No, it's not working. I can see that it's not working, but we, okay, no, it is working. So this is our software that we develop in a slide project, and you see how we can uh, follow and count how many people are in San Marco Square in, 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 a, in a certain period, and also to have information on the quality of mobility of these people, if there are crowding effect and so on. Uh, and this is something that we have developed, especially for slides project. So uh, you will, how, one of the problems also we have uh, COPE, with uh, is uh, how we can provide simulation uh, of this kind of model because this model are developed by university people and sometimes it's very difficult to maintain the model if I transfer this model in your system. So we decide to use a web service uh, uh, system. So we built a web service in the CAST, that is the uh, Unibo Institute for uh, Tourism and uh, uh, the municipality can ask to our server simulation of special day. So using the dashboard, or slide dashboard, you can ask, for example, which are the mobility in uh, that days in Dubrovnik, in Ferrara, in Sibenik, and uh, this is working because we maintain the model in our uh, server, and you can see the result of simulation, and we can update the model uh, uh, during the day. So uh, this is... Uh, an example of data analysis in Dubrovnik, you can have information on the number of people, trends uh, during the month. Uh, this is uh, an example in Ferrara where you, we use this sniffer, Wi-Fi sniffer, to get information on how many people is visiting uh, during uh, special uh, days or uh, using, for example, this is an example of the average uh, uh, people, average present in uh, Piazza Trento Trieste during the, the, the week and you can see the different, uh, different use of, of, a, of a place. This is an example from Venice. This is Capodanno 22. So you can see that our camera recorded just a peak during Capodanno in San Marco Square. So you can just have a special uh, analysis when you have an event in mind in the system to get information about uh, what is happening. So uh, what is visitor mobility model? We, of course, uh, simplify the city, so we, we reduce the city to a network, and then we have to introduce in this uh, road network the information of which are the main attractions, so with, um, in order to build the agenda, this is for, for Bari, for example, and we use this attraction to create a mobility demand for tourists, for visitors, uh, then we introduce uh, information on the which is the attitude of working, uh, so, uh, and how long is a visit, a typical visit uh, in the different, uh, uh, different uh, attractions. So this is data that we study from our data set that we introduce in the model. And uh, the model is able to simulate virtual uh, visitor that move in the city. And so uh, using the computer, we can really simulate uh, 500, 500 50,000 people move it in Venice, for example, because we have the power to do this. And uh, uh, we can have a profile of, of a presence in uh, the, the different uh, attraction area. For example, this is a simulation for Venice uh, we have done just for, to, to test the model. We can provide this kind of maps uh, that uh, gives uh, an information about the flow in the city. This is an example for Dubrovnik, and this is can be provide you by using this uh, web server. And for example, we have uh, information about the distribution of people. This is for Bali, where we have a system of video camera along uh, 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 main, one of the main road, and then we can simulate uh, the distribution of people in the historical center by heat map. So this is just uh, a taste of what we have done in the project and uh, uh, what, and I hope what we can also do in the future. So. Uh, we put, we, I, I try to get two free conclusions. One is that uh, using the technology we have uh, at the disposal now, it is possible to collect a big amount of data. 
is it, it is not so expensive, so it's uh, an affordable cost, and uh, it is possible using the power of computer to create this model in the idea, I could say, of a digital twin, so to create some virtual city where you can uh, explore scenario and you can explore the effect of, uh, of, of uh, some policy of governance. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the, for me, the collaboration between university, public administration, stakeholder is a fundamental because only using this collaboration we can really uh, use this new solution. And uh, uh, of course, uh, dynamical models, but everything that we can provide for university are not the solution, are instruments, are tools, and can help a decision, but not ask the model to reproduce and to give all the information. It is just a uh, a, a, a simplification of reality that point out some uh, uh, maybe interesting effect or, uh, or some correlation between different points. So uh, thanks for your attention and if you want to know more there is uh, another meeting for slide 9, 10 June. I left uh, some uh, uh, schedule in, in the entrance. If you are interested you can participate or online where I can show that there are a lot of possibilities of using big data and we wish we will exp explain uh, to uh, an interdisciplinary public of this possibility. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dani. And now Simona, Aceto, and Antonio, Cerni, ecco, <laughs> that will explain us the, the, what, what it is, the dashboard and its use. Okay, in the meanwhile, Good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming here today. Uh, While well, I have the task to introduce to you the slides dashboard. So we have talked about this dashboard, what is it, how we arrived at this final output that we can say that it's a very strategic tool for the project itself and for the uh, cross-border area too. Well, um, what are the goals of, the, of this specific tool? The, the goals are in line with the whole project. First of all, uh, already the Prof. Bazzani mentioned the, the importance of the data and the same date, uh, Valeria, uh, before me. Uh, the focus was about the data and uh, uh, first of all, the analysis of the available data. Uh, why? Because in this way we can um, find uh, suitable solutions for sustainable and balanced territorial development. That is one of the main goals of this project. Secondly, uh, mo to monitor. So the dashboard will be useful for the decision makers uh, the, um, and for the um, strategic uh, positions um, to, they, they will have the possibility to have some kind of information that will allow them to monitor the touristic pressure, uh, to monitor the enhancing and the promotion of their own destination. And they can in this way evaluate the impact of the decisions and the uh, strategic um, decisions they adopted and if and they, if that these kind of decisions has, have a good impact on the territory or if they need to change it and adapt them to a different result. Thirdly, uh, so this is the last goal, but of course is not less important than the other ones. It's the contribution to the uh, promotion uh, of the uh, territory in order to shape the identity. Uh, Valeria already mentioned this uh, issue and it was mentioned also uh, before us from the Joint Secretariat representative. It's very important to enhance the identity of the destinations. That's why we have dedicated a specific section to the uh, cultural heritage, the tangible and intangible cultural heritage in the project. Uh, yes, as a first step, because we can say that this is a first step, we have developed uh, five prototypes. 
Uh, this means that this kind of dashboard can be then replicated in other kind of destinations, of course, with a specific kind of data. Uh, but this is a prototype. Uh, we have five prototypes created for the five cultural destinations involved in the project. We have Shibenik, Venice, Bari, Ferrara, and Dubrovnik. They have more or less the same uh, structure, but you don't find always the same kind of data within each dashboard. This is one of the uh, issues that Valeria touched before me. Why? Because in order to develop a dashboard, first of all, you have to collect the data. Data uh, that can be different by country by country and destination by country. Okay, I have to be in a hurry because I'm the last one. I have to be fast. Um, on one side, you have the data hub in, uh, for which we have identified the indicators to be considered. We have designed the requirements for each data and we have processed data. We have done all these in, um, activities together with the support of Antonio, who is not close to, next to me, but is here, uh, who is our, uh, who is one of the founder of 42BIT, our IT service provider for this specific project. Of course, then we created the dashboard in order to perform the uh, data we collected and to, um, to show the analyzed data and to visualize the data. Um, Michele already talked about the challenge to collect data. The, the problem was mainly to, to, to have standardized data. So on one, for first step was to collect data. Second step, uh, process the data. Third step, okay, create the dashboard. What is a dashboard? The dashboard expected specific sections as they were mentioned by uh, Valeria in order to uh, provide overview on, from different point of view. Uh, on one side, you can have city at a glance, so with the information about the population, you can have information about the environment, you can have information about the tourism flows, about the accessibility and mobility in order uh, to, uh, to have a, a complete panorama uh, of the tourist pressure of your own destination. And of course, you have also information about city popularity and attractiveness. In this case, we also collect data from TripAdvisor. For each section, you have data uh, on different issues, such as trend of population in the municipality. In this specific case, uh, you have a picture and a graph from a Barry dashboard. And you can also download okay, this red narrow uh, indicate that you can also download the graph each time. Per each graph, you can find a description. And then you can also select uh, other kind of information that are the correlations we have created. In this case, for example, you can compare the tourist market versus the non-hotel accommodation. And uh, we adopted a Pearson coefficient that can demonstrate that they, they are very much interrelated um, each other. And it's useful, of course, I, as, you, as you can imagine, for the decision makers in order to decide how to better manage the tourist pressure in different periods or years. Um, as the speakers before me specified, oh, we had uh, different source of data. In this case, for example, uh, it, the, 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 the source was Puglia Promozione, other, uh, in other cases was ISTAT, other cases was TripAdvisor, and so on and so on. Uh, here, for example, you have data about tourists and you have to graph about the arrival and number of nights uh, they stay in, in the town. You have also the evolution of tourism arrivals versus the city population. So you can compare also period and kind of pressure. Uh, and here again, you can see which are the tourist correlations, evolution of monthly tourism arrivals versus the air passengers. So you have 
a, a wide overview. In this case, for example, it is divided into mounts too. Uh, and per each graph, you have also a short comment here uh, in order to understand what is shown in this specific kind of data. You so as Valeria said before, we also worked on dynamic map. Uh, it's a way to enhance the cultural heritage. So here a tourist can select which kind of craft he's looking for, uh, if he's looking for food or uh, ceramic or so on, and, and look uh, in for the uh, specific period is, is interested in it. And then uh, the, 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 the user can see where are located all the characteristics um, and, and the craft activities and can also get information about the accessibility, the kind of uh, visit is offered to the visitors if they are uh, organized for disabled people, if uh, they speak different languages and so on and so on. Uh, yes, of course, here you can also uh, have information about the fits uh, uh, linked to the dynamic map. And as already Marmando showed, showed, has shown you, uh, here you can see uh, the people detected on the streets. So you have this kind of uh, mobility uh, map in each uh, dashboard created per each involved destination. Yes, my time is expired. You have also this uh, pie chart in which you can see which are the main attractions for tourism. And you can also decide push another kind of attraction. And so first of all, may maybe this one can be useful to you to decide how to do it. And yes, my time is finished. Thank you for your attention. If you need some more information, you can contact us. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Simona. Now we will have a coffee break and then the second part of the morning with experiences. We talk about experiences from the field. So, welcome for the coffee break. <laughs>